Hi friends, welcome to the performance testing tutorial. In this first testing tutorial of 2021, we will learn the performance testing fundamentals. We hope this tutorial should be helpful for the beginners and all the testing professionals who wish to learn something new in 2021. So let's get started. So friends, in this tutorial, let's see what all we will learn today. First, what is performance testing? Then, why do performance testing? Types of performance testing. Performance testing process. Performance testing metrics. Performance test tools. And last but not the least, some example of performance test cases. So, friends, what is performance testing? Performance testing is a type of a non-functional software testing technique in which the performance of an application is evaluated under simulated expected or higher than expected workload. In other words, performance testing is a testing practice performed to determine how a system performs in terms of responsiveness and stability under a particular workload. Quality attributes of performance include scalability, reliability, speed, resource usage and stability. Scalability determines maximum user load the software application can handle. Product reliability is measured in terms of performance of the application under different environments and different conditions. Speed determines how quickly the application responds. Resource utilization is a way to track how busy various resources of a system are when running a performance test. And then stability determines if the application is stable under varying loads. Now the next question arises, why should we do performance testing? Like any other testing, performance testing also brings up the weak point in the product under test. In the current market performance and responsiveness of applications play an important role in the success of a business. It indicates the scope of improvement in any product that is being tested over issues like a delayed response, large turnaround time, problems in running multiple commands simultaneously, and other inconsistencies across the software or the product. Performance testing answers to the questions like how many users the system could handle, how well the system could recover when the no of users crossed the maximum users, what is the response time of the system under normal and peak loads. Ultimately, the benefits of performance testing can attain a number of goals, including demonstrating that the system meets performance criteria, comparing two systems to see which performs better or provide measurements of which parts of the system perform badly under a given workload. To understand how software performs on users' systems, different types of performance tests are applied. Let's see the different types of performance testing. So the first is load test. Load testing measures system performance as the workload increases. That workload could mean concurrent users or transactions. The system is monitored to measure response time and system staying power as workload increases. That workload falls within the parameters of normal working conditions. Second is stress test. Unlike load testing, stress testing, also known as fatigue testing, is meant to measure system performance outside of the parameters of normal working conditions. The software is given more users or transactions that can be handled. The goal of stress testing is to measure the software stability. At what point does software fail, and how does the software recover from failure? Third performance testing type is soak test or endurance test. It's an evaluation of how software performs with a normal workload over an extended amount of time. The goal of endurance testing is to check for system problems such as memory leaks. Fourth is the volume testing, which determines how efficiently software performs with a large, projected amounts of data. It is also known as flood testing because the test floods the system with data. Fifth is reliability testing or recovery testing, which is performed to verify whether or not the application is able to return back to its normal state after a failure or abnormal behavior, and how long does it take for it to do so. Sixth is capacity testing, which is done to understand if the application capable of meeting business volume under both normal and peak load conditions. Capacity testing is generally done for future prospects. Capacity testing is used to determine how many users or transactions a given web application will support and still meet performance. During this testing, resources such as processor capacity, network bandwidth, memory usage, disk capacity, etc. are considered and altered to meet the goal. Online banking is a perfect example of where capacity testing could play a major role. Seventh type is scalability testing. Scalability testing is used to determine if software is effectively handling increasing workloads. 
This can be determined by gradually adding to the user load or data volume while monitoring system performance. Also, the workload may stay at the same level while resources such as CPU and memory are changed. Number 8 is Spike Test. Spike testing is a type of stress testing that evaluates software performance when workloads are substantially increased quickly and repeatedly. The workload is beyond normal expectations for short amounts of time. Number 9 is Breakpoint Test. Application Breakpoint Test helps to find out the breaking point of the application or server from performance testing perspective. This test is helpful to identify the maximum load-bearing capacity of the application. Tenth performance testing type is step-up test. The step-up performance test is helpful to identify the performance of a software system at varying load. Unlike the load test, the step-up test has multiple steady states in a single test. Due to multiple steady states, this test is also called as multi-level load test. Now it's time to learn the performance testing process. As you can see, first step is identify performance scenarios, identify the scenarios which are most common, most critical and also the scenarios containing large data. Second is identify performance testing environment. Know your physical test environment, production environment and what testing tools are available. Understand details of the hardware, software and network configurations used during testing before you begin the testing process. It helps testers create more efficient tests. It also helps identify possible challenges that testers may encounter during the performance testing procedures. Third step is identify the performance acceptance criteria. This includes goals and constraints for throughput, response times and resource allocation. It is also necessary to identify project success criteria outside of these goals and constraints. Testers should be empowered to set performance criteria and goals because often the project specifications will not include a wide enough variety of performance benchmarks. Then comes plan and design performance tests, determine the usage and identify key scenarios to test for all possible use cases. It is necessary to simulate a variety of end users, plan test data and outline what metrics will be gathered. Configuring the test environment is the next step. Prepare the testing environment before execution. Also, arrange tools and other resources. In next step, we distribute the load. Distribute the load according to the usage pattern or mention the duration and stability. Then it's an obvious and the main step of the testing process which is test execution. In this part, we execute and monitor the tests. Lastly, we analyze, fix issues and retest. After executing the test scripts, analyze the test results. The bottleneck could occur because of these aspects like the problem in code, hardware issue network issues, and the software issue. After fine-tuning, rerun the tests and check the result whether it meets the required goal or not. A number of performance metrics, or key performance indicators, can help an organization evaluate current performance. Performance metrics commonly include the ones shown on screen. Throughput, how many units of information a system processes over a specified time. Memory, the working storage space available to a processor or workload. Response time, or latency, the amount of time that elapses between a user-entered request and the start of a system's response to that request. Wait time, also known as average latency, this tells developers how long it takes to receive the first byte after a request is sent. Peak response time, this is the measurement of the longest amount of time it takes to fulfill a request. Peak response time that is significantly longer than average may indicate an anomaly that will create problems. Error rate, this calculation is a percentage of requests resulting in errors compared to all requests. These errors usually occur when the load exceeds capacity. Bandwidth, the volume of data per second that can move between workloads, usually across a network. CPU interrupts per second, the number of hardware interrupts a process receives per second. Garbage collection, it has to do with returning unused memory back to the system. Garbage collection needs to be monitored for efficiency. Disk time, amount of time disk is busy executing a read or write request. Thread counts, an application's health can be measured by the no of threads that are running and currently active. Average load time, the average amount of time it takes to deliver every request is a major indicator of quality from a user's perspective. These metrics and others help an organization perform multiple types of performance tests. Performance testing tools are of two types, open source tools and licensed tools. Some of the popular performance testing tools are as shown here. 1. Apache JMeter. 2. LoadRunner. 3. WebLoad. 4. Load Ninja. 5. Smart Meter. 6. Load UI Pro. 7. 
Neo Load. 8. Silk Performer. 9. App Loader. 10. Load Complete. It's the time to look at some of the example performance tests. These tests or scenarios should be helpful to understand performance testing in practical. 1. Determining application performance at different loads, how many users can simultaneously work with the application without slowdown. 2. Check whether the application supports a certain number of users. 3. Find the application's crash point determine how much load can crash the server application. 4. Check whether a site performance can scale up or not by making changes to server software or hardware. Example, you can update an algorithms or upgrade the RAM or CPU. 5. Measure your database performance by checking the number of database transactions per second and the number of active database transactions. Performance testing is a critical part of the software testing process as it ensures that software performs according to the optimal customer satisfaction. When performance testing is performed successfully, it results in high-quality software as per the latest industry standards. Friends, hope this performance testing tutorial would speed up your performance in software testing by adding new bits in your knowledge. Again, please like, share, subscribe and comment, so that we remain motivated to come up with such knowledge sharing videos. Thanks for watching all our videos, see you in the next one.